Today we're talking about the Zeno trumpet. Stick around. Hi everybody, my name is Andrew King. I'm Jason. And we are going to be talking about the YTR-8335 2S. This is the Yamaha Zeno trumpet in a silver plating. Again, you can also find it at alamomusic.com. Please come and visit and we can find all items that we are talking about in these videos. So, tell me about it. What do we got here? Well, just as like kind of a weird start to the video, just to kind of show you how far we've come. Right. <laughs> I brought in my old school, old ultratone G bugle. Um, this oh. used to be the gold standard of what drum corps played back in in okay. the 60s and the 70s. Yeah. Um, they're weird for a couple reasons. They're in the key of G. Why? <laughs> what? I Wait. don't know. Okay. <laughs> they cool. Ju they just they built them in the key of G. Nice. So they're they sound a third lower than a trumpet. <laughs> Anybody with perfect pitch can hear that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's a G. Right, right, right. Um, the other freaky thing about it is it's a, a piston, which you play with your thumb, rotor, which you play with your opposite finger. So... Oh, okay, cool. So that's so, how you get the whole... All right. Yeah, so on, on old judges' sheets, there was a criteria called manual dexterity <laughs> because you had to use both hands to play this. That's so cool. So... I show this because kind of the, the new gold standard nowadays for what what drum corps play on and what, what a lot of bands play on yeah. is this instrument, the Yamaha YTR 8335S2. Maybe I have that backwards. 2S. 2S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all the Yamaha teams in DCI use this trumpet. Okay, cool. Um, I have a lot of experience with this trumpet when I taught Crossman and Colts. Those were Yamaha teams. Mm -hmm. So I got very, very familiar with, yeah. with this, this trumpet. So as far as like teaching, like teaching core in general, right, and getting these kind of trumpets, what kind of things were you looking for that this met? Um, well, and, and we've talked about this on, on numerous videos, the, the pitch tendencies mm -hmm. are predictable. Yeah. One horn is going to sound the same as the other. And when you're dealing with, you know, 24 trumpets, um, you know, having everybody slide pretty much in the same place is a nice thing. Because um, then when it's time to tune, you don't have to make a whole lot of huge adjustments. And, mm -hmm. and, and again, everything is predictable. Um, it does have that double post construction, mm -hmm. so it produces a nice dark sound. Gotcha. Um, it is pretty versatile in that, um, for different styles, you can get your players to produce the appropriate tone qualities. Gotcha. If you're playing something that's jazz or pop and you need that kind of brighter sound, this will do that if you're playing Ness and Dorma or something like that. This is a, a good instrument for that as well. So the versatility and the colors you can produce are as about as wide as you can get. The other huge advantage that I found with these is I haven't found a single person that can overblow this instrument. Gotcha. So when you're playing outside or in a giant football stadium, um, being able to throw sound at long distances yeah. is, is a nice feature to have. Absolutely. I have never, I've heard plenty of kids play it with a bad sound, but I've never heard anybody with a sound approach overblow the instrument. Okay. So like when you say like overblowing, what, what kind of, what, what does that really mean? Like, so this instrument is able to take it, right? It's able to produce the sound that you want. You're able to get that clearness to it. What, what is, what it, it gives this the difference to that overblowing, do you think? Um, with horns, with probably a lighter alloy and whatnot, you get this kind of weird double buzz sound. Mm -hmm. I mean, anytime you're going to play loud, you have to make an adjustment with your face to keep the air in the center of the, the mouthpiece. Yeah, you right? got to perfectly point it out. Because to, yeah. to, you're shoving more air, the tendency is going to be wanting to, wanting to go sharp. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're doing the right stuff with that, 
you can put as much air into this horn physically as you can, and you're not going to get that distortion. Is it going to get a little brighter? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Brass instruments get brighter when when you play them louder, right. and sometimes people have an issue with that. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bummer, but I don't. <laughs> so when it comes to you know having a, having a bunch of players just blow, these things are really, really, really effective. Heck yeah. So so like when it comes to those kind of horns and getting that kind of tone quality, I mean, when you go into drum core, in my experience, right, this is just as a watcher. Drum core, when you're playing the trumpet and stuff, you have a very specific kind of set tone that's very akin to like, you know, what you're talking about, jazz, pop, mariachi, and stuff like that, that kind of brightness and everything like that. Let's talk, what about the other side of the spectrum, right? So like you're going to college and stuff like that. This is one of those horns that even if you bought it online, you're making a pretty safe purchase. Oh, right? absolutely. Because you know you're, it's, it's Yamaha. The Yamaha's mm -hmm. known for their consistency across their brand. What does this do for the classical player? Uh, I know you're talking about like the heavy, the heavy alloy and everything like that. Does it have to do with the bell, kind of more along those lines? Just kind of all of the above. Gotcha. Um, it, it really is a versatile trumpet. I mean, you could you could play, you know. Hindemith Symphony B flat, right. play the trumpet parts and sound just fine on it. Yeah. And then take it into jazz band and play Night in Tunisia and play it stylistically appropriately for that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So they are very versatile horns. And for anybody who's looking to make an investment for a, a solid horn for high school and college, you mm -hmm. know, this is an all purpose great horn. Perfect. For years and years and years. Now, and one of the things I can say is that in comparison, right, if we like look at different brands and everything, this one's definitely going to be in that camp that you go into. Because you got you got your student, you got your intermediate. This is definitely that professional model, yes, it right? Is. Yep. Um, the professional model, it's made with a silver plating. So this one has silver plating versus like the more lacquer plating that we're used to on like student trumpets. Um, there is a lacquer version of this. Okay, kill. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There, what is... there is a lacquer. I've never seen one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never personally seen one. The only time I've ever seen Xenos have been in the context of outdoor stuff. Yeah, and right. And most silver. people, except for the Casper Troopers nowadays, play on silver instruments. Okay, cool. Hey, that's neat. Um, what is the what does the silver do? I mean, like I know like usually when I've been told about and everything like that, I'm hearing more like it has a better resonance with the sound, like the, with your air. Like silver kind of just it has like this sound to it. Does that is that kind of go wrong with that or I've heard that too. Um, my ear isn't that good. <laughs> um, to me, it's it's a cosmetic thing. Um, I've heard people say that about euphoniums, for example. I play on a lacquer mm -hmm. euphonium. I think it sounds fine. I and I and I I did play on the same model euphonium, the the lacquer versus the silver, and I didn't. It didn't feel any different mm -hmm. to my ear. It didn't sound any different to me. It's it's more of a cosmetic thing. Yeah, I I'm sure. Well, I'll put it to you this way: I've never seen a silver Monet trumpet. Gotcha. That that I'm aware of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he uses yellow brass or whatever kind of crazy alloys right. he uses to <laughs> to make Wynton Marsalis's trumpets. Oh, that but all of his stuff, I I've never seen. I've seen different variances of, of yellows and reds, mm -hmm. but I don't think I've ever seen like a Monet trumpet yeah. in silver. I could be wrong about that, and if I'm wrong, I'm sure somebody will let us know <laughs> just how wrong I am, but right. <laughs> I, I don't recall ever seeing a, a, a silver Monet. That's cool. No, dude, this is a really cool horn. Um, I, as far as, like, I guess my last thing to ask about this horn would be the basically the cost effectiveness, right? So like you're going to college and everything like that, you wanna go and spend a certain amount of money to get this horn. Um, there's different ways to purchase this kind of horn. Uh, you can buy a cash and you can get a lower price on and stuff like that, which is totally possible. Usually these can go around, even if they use to new, I'm saying like maybe like 25, 35, maybe four, kind of around there and mm -hmm. stuff like that, keep it around that range. But with these kind of horns, you're getting that consistency and it's gonna retain its value for the long approach too. Mm -hmm. So like say you get this for college, it's a great professional instrument, but you know, there is stuff above it. This keeps the value. You can you can sell it to a coming in 
student, right? And then you can go ahead and get that next one up, and it works out great. Mm -hmm. um, people are always looking for these, used and new. Yeah, I mean, any anything that's going to be a higher level is going to be a more specialized kind of trumpet. Yeah. Um, specific to certain styles, like the Bobby Shue trumpet and, and the Wayne Bergeron trumpet. Mm -hmm. Obviously, those are geared more for the jazz player. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, this is really an outstanding all-purpose play any style right. instrument. So it's always a certain, just the safe purchase. Yep. Across yep. the line, and that, that's I feel that way on the saxophone lines too, like the sixty-two and stuff like that. Those end up being great. For well, and purchase. in terms of of return on investment, you know, if you buy one of these um, for let's say a high school student, and they end up getting a scholarship, mm -hmm. it's just paid for itself. That's awesome. Well, cool. Well, hey, let's hear out sounds and everything, and then we can go from there. Cool. Thank you so much for playing. That sounded great and everything. I'm especially on the high range and everything. The consisting throughout, great. Um, anything you want to add? Um, well, I like I said, I, I have a ton of experience with this, so it's kind of a it's near and dear to my heart. Right. So <laughs> I, I tend to really, really push these as much as I can, just because of the experience I've had and the success that 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 we've had with them. Absolutely. So any program that goes and looks into these, even if you're looking from a band, director, a band director standpoint or administration standpoint or even just as a student, you can't go wrong no. with this instrument. It's Not just going to be one of the best ones you can get out there for the safe for the money and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like this video. It means a lot to us and it gets us going. Um, if you have any more questions, please leave a comment down below and we'd be more than happy to get back to you and address anything you want to talk about. Um, thank you so much for watching and have a good one.